Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jackie Govea and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how I created this abstract landscape painting from start to finish. I'm going to talk about the different tools that I use, show you some techniques that I've learned along the way, and also talk about the specific colors that I used in this painting. I'm going to keep things really simple and I hope you learn lots of stuff and have lots of fun. Thanks so much. So before we get started, I just want to talk about the tools that I like to use when I paint. Um, obviously, I have my easel. I've had this easel for several years um, and it's nice and sturdy. But when you get started, you can use anything. This happens to be a little bit more expensive easel, but you can buy things that are just tabletop if you're getting started. You can buy things right at Michael's that aren't that expensive. Um, my canvas. I tend to like a canvas that has a lot of texture on it. It's a heavier weight cotton canvas and it's wrapped, it's gallery wrapped. It's about an inch and a half thick because I paint the sides. Um, that way people don't have to frame it if they don't want to. Because I use acrylics, I always have a spray bottle on hand. The room that I'm in now tends to be dry, so my paints dry quickly. Um, and you have to kind of keep your environment in mind. If you're painting on a um, rather muggy day, your paints are gonna, it's gonna take longer for them to dry because they're gonna be a little bit soupier. Um, so when I'm, tr if I'm painting in a drier environment, this spray bottle comes in handy because I can keep my paints wet and I can control the consistency of them. Um, I also use two types of gessos when I paint. I use a clear gesso, which um, is clear. It doesn't really affect the color at all, um, but it helps me to kind of get some fluidity with the paint. And the clear gesso also has a small, tiny grittiness to it. Again, it gives it a texture that I like to work with. The other gesso that I work with is white gesso. I tend to use gesso as my white. I do use a titanium white, but especially when I'm working on big paintings, I use gesso as my white because it gives me that ability to really mix up big, um, big spots of paint. So that way when I'm working on a large canvas, I can move the painting, I can move the paint around. So I like to use gesso as my white. You know, it's acrylic base, it mixes well with my acrylic paints. So my paints themselves, my favorite brand is M. Graham. M. Graham makes um, both acrylic and oils. Um, this, it's more of a, a probably a pricier acrylic paint, but because I sell my paintings, I like to have quality products. Um, and M. Graham, their colors are gorgeous. They're really vibrant, they're really rich, and they're great to work with. My palette, my, so my palette is basically, I think it used to be in a picture frame at one point. It's just a piece of plexiglass. Um, and it's, I can clean it really easy. I spray it down, I can wash it off. I keep my palette nice and clean. And when you see how I mix paintings, I only mix one painting, one color at a time. I don't have a bunch of different colors. So I mix the color that I'm gonna work with, I use it and I clean my palette off. So I like to keep my palette nice and clean because it helps me keep my colors nice and fresh. I also use palette knives. So I use the palette knives to both mix paint and also apply paint on my canvas. And I'm gonna show you that in the video later, um, how I actually apply some paint on my canvas with a palette knife. And then last but not least, my brushes. So I buy really cheap brushes. I know when you can go out and you can spend a ton of money on brushes, I used to do that and it just didn't make sense for me anymore with the way I paint. So I buy these brushes at like a Lowe's or a Michael's. They're super cheap, they're like maybe a dollar. Um, and I really work my brushes hard. As you can see, this little stubby brush used to look something like this. But I like 
using both of these brushes because this is this brush is really soft it gives me one sort of technique that I like to use the way I apply the paint and this brush that's really gotten worn down and stubby helps me really kind of scrub in areas if I want to lighten things up if I want to kind of pull some of the paint off you know I get to use these kinds of brushes this will wear down to a point where I really can't use it anymore so I throw it out but again I use really really cheap brushes so let's get started so before we actually get started to paint I'm going to talk about the paint colors that we're going to use in this painting we're really going to restrict it to four colors I want to keep things simple so one of the first colors that we're going to use is ultramarine blue this is a really great color. I use it a lot. It's probably my favorite blue. Um, it's very rich, but it has a warmness, uh, warmth to it that um, is really, really um, rich, you know. So ultramarine blue is our first blue that we're gonna be using. Um, the second blue that we're gonna use is cobalt blue. This, as compared to ultramarine, is colder. It's a little bit, um, cooler in its sense it's lighter it's um i i tend to think of it more as icier because it's just a cooler blue so we're going to be using that along with the ultramarine blue and the two of those values together work really nicely so those are my cool colors the other color i'm going to use is olive green um, and olive green will be my neutral color and when i mix this with white um, and we're going to mix it with some cadmium orange which i'm going to talk about in a second it creates a really nice earthy color. This olive green is also a very, very rich dark color that we're gonna to add to the painting at the very, very end. Um, again, it's just a really rich color. It's great to work with, really earthy. And the last color that we're gonna work with is cadmium orange. I use cadmium orange a lot. I mix it with cobalt blue, which we're going to do. I mix it with the olive green, which we're going to do. And then sometimes I use it right straight out of the tube, which we're also going to do. It has a really fresh, bright, vibrant color, and it works really nicely with the blues. All right. So we're going to get started right off the bat. I'm going to start mixing up some paint and, um, and we'll start painting. So the first color that we're gonna mix up, we're gonna just kind of get a base on our canvas. It's gonna be like our underpainting. Um, and I'm just gonna mix some white, my, using my gesso, the white gesso with some ultramarine blue. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of gesso on my palette. Add in some ultramarine blue, tap it in. I'm also gonna, add just some of my clear gesso, sp spray it down. I like to add the clear gesso, especially in the beginning, again, because it gives it that texture. Um, and I keep the, I like to keep my paint a little bit on the wet side when I'm getting started. And then I'm just mixing it up. And if, you know, if, if it's not mixed all the way through, that's fine, I don't worry about it. And then I just take my brush dip it in, and then I just start applying the paint on the canvas. Now I'm not doing anything specific, I'm not painting in any specific way, and I'm not covering the canvas completely. I like to add the painting to the canvas in different directions, just to give it some variety. And like I said, just keep it really loose. Don't worry about covering your entire canvas because we just want to kind of get some sort of base on here. So at this point, I have my canvas covered. I have my, my um, underpainting done. At this point at, in the painting, I start to think about a couple of things. So I start to think about, one of the things I start to think about is where is my horizon line gonna be? Most of my pa paintings, my horizon line is about one third of the way down. I don't measure it. The canvas is a 12 by 12. I don't measure it. I just kind of eyeball it. And 
So sometimes when I do a painting, I put the horizon line really, really high, or I put the horizon line really low. But in this instance, I'm gonna keep it at that typical one third of the way down. So because I know that, I want to already start kind of breaking up the values between the top part of my painting and the bottom part of my painting. So I want to kind of lighten up, gray up the top half, and on the bottom half, on the bottom side, I'm gonna make things a little bit bluer, darker, start pulling out that blue a little bit. So with the paint that's already on my canvas, it's already on my palette, it's already pretty much dried up and I want to kind of clean my palette at this point because I'm gonna mix up some other color to um, stop getting that top part on. So I'm just gonna squirt my palette down Wipe it off. And now I'm gonna mix up um, some white with my cobalt blue and just a really tiny, tiny touch of my cadmium orange. And once we get it on there, we'll, we'll get to know whether or not we need some more orange or not. So again, I'm just gonna add some white onto my palette. A little bit of cobalt blue and like I said just a real oh I need my just a real small spot of the cadmium orange just to get started So this makes up like a, a really nice, uh, more of a grayish color, which is going to start lightening the top part of my canvas. And I'm gonna leave my um, brush that I just used with the ultramarine blue, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna use um, a whole nother brush, a different brush, a clean brush for this color. So again, I'm just gonna take some of that color and just start throwing it really loosely on the top part. And I'm not gonna cover up the entire top part with this color because I want some of that ultramarine blue that we already put on, I want that some of that to stay there because I want some of that to kind of bleed through this little bit more grayish color. Okay, so now that we're at this point, I'm already thinking, okay, I want to start drawing out that blue from the bottom and I want that to be a little bit deeper because I want there to be a clear separation between what's going on on the sky area and what's going on on more of the water area. So, you know, while I'm doing this, while I'm building up my layers, I'm constantly kind of thinking, where are my values at and what do I want my values to be? So because, again, we're working with acrylics, the paints dry quickly, um, I, you know, I just put on some of the top part. I already know the bottom part is dry. I'm going to start working on the bottom part. And then I can kind of go back and forth and figure out where do I want my values to be. So I'm going to take that bottom part and I'm going to start building up some more of that ultramarine blue. So again, I'm going to just kind of clean my palette, clean my palette knife. And this time, the first time that I mixed up my paint color, I actually put down white first. So, and because I wasn't too, too worried about exactly how the value is, but because I know I want the ultramarine blue to be a little bit sharper and to be a little bit darker, now I'm gonna put the ultramarine blue on my palette first and then I'm gonna add the white because now I wanna control that color a little bit more. So I'm just gonna add on some ultramarine blue. And then I'm gonna just very lightly just kinda of drop some white on there. Again, I want to control, I'm gonna put some clear gesso. I want to control the value of this blue a little bit more than I did 
on the first round. So if I add the white slowly, then I can much better control that, that blue. And it's still looking a little dark to me, so I'm gonna add a little bit more white. So now I can see that I have a nice darker color. You know, and sometimes what I do is I'll take, if I'm not sure where I am with the value, I'll take some of the paint, put it on my palette knife, and just kind of compare it to what's on my canvas. And that right there will kind of give you a really good idea of where am I with the value. Is this dark enough? Is it too dark? What do I need to do? So, as I said before, sometimes I apply the paint with my palette knife. Since I got a bunch on here, I'm just going to kind of throw it on the canvas, sweep it across. I'm actually just basically cleaning off my palette knife, but there's not lots of paint on there, so I'm gonna use that paint. And then I'm just gonna kinda of go in with the brush, and kinda of blend it in a little bit. It's getting a little bit dry, so I'm gonna kinda of wet, wet it with my spray bottle so that way I can move the paint around and once again I'm not going to cover the entire area because I like I like there to be some sort of transition and some depth of here's some light areas here's some dark areas I don't like I tend to not like certain areas or my areas to be completely opaque with color. I like there to be a variety. So, and I'm already, I'm already thinking, I have too big of a mass here of one straight color. So I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. And I'm also going to, this time, add some white, but I'm gonna add a little bit of cobalt blue in there because I wanna kind of break up that blue color. So adding some cobalt blue will, again, just give me a little bit of variety. So I'm adding more white, add some more cobalt blue right into my mix. And now I'm getting, you know, a slightly lighter color, a lighter value. It's very subtle, but it's there. So when the paint starts to dry, you'll be able to see that there's some nice variety there. And you're also noticing, you're also starting to really see where the value differences are between the top half of the painting and the lower half of the painting, which, you know, this is what gets me excited. This is when I get inspired by landscapes, I tend to be drawn to areas where there's sharp color changes or sharp, um, sharp value changes, you know, the dark, where the dark meets the light. So this is giving you a nice good area where you're seeing the top half is, is now really standing out as lighter than the bottom half. Um, so again, here I am at a point where this part here is a little bit wet. I'm gonna give it a chance to dry, so I'm gonna kinda go back up to the top because I wanna start pulling in um, a little bit more warmth. So I'm gonna wanna get some more of that cadmium, uh, cadmium orange in there. So I'm gonna work on the top half. So I have tons of blue on my palette. I'm gonna clean this down because I'm gonna be working with a whole different depth value. And I'm gonna stick with creating, adding the white, the cobalt blue, and I'm gonna add a little bit more orange this time. I'm gonna get a little bit more brave Mix that together. And the cobalt blue with cadmium orange, it makes a greenish gray, but it's a warm color. It's a really pretty gray. It can be used in a lot of paintings because it, it, you know, it kind of starts getting a little bit on the neutral side. So I'm just gonna take my brush. It might be a little on the dark side, but or the green side, but that's okay. We can always, we can always change it. So if I put it on here and I think, ah, you know, it's, it's a little too much on the green side, 
that's fine. You can go back. I'm going to mix up a little bit more with the with just the white and the blue, the cobalt blue, and go over it, and that'll start that'll start lightening it up. So the nice thing about paint is you can always paint over it. Especially with acrylics where it dries quickly. So I'll just take some white, and this time I'm just going to stick with the cobalt blue. And I'm just going to lay it on top. And I'm fine with some of the green showing through because it's warm. So I'm completely fine with that. But it's just a little too green for my taste. So I'm just going to cover that up a little bit. And I'm actually going to take some of the same color and I'm going to kind of add it to the bottom. I like kind of adding, when I have a color at the top, I like kind of adding it at the bottom just to make the whole painting a little bit cohesive and works together. And again, I'm noticing that my, my canvas is getting a little dry so I can squirt directly on the canvas. just to stop moving that paint around and to kind of stop blending, blending some of the colors in. So I want to definitely, I like the way that this, this blue on this side is really nice and rich and dark. So I don't want to touch that at all, but I do want to kind of kind of give it a nice transition into from the dark into the light. So again, like I said, just to kind of give it some variation so it's not all one flat color. Um, so now on the top part, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I have a nice transition between the bottom part and the, and the top half. There's a nice uh, value change here, which is great. But I do want to add just a tiny little bit of um, more warmth in the top. So I'm going to just mix up just a little bit of my white and cadmium orange, and I'm just going to throw it in here again, keeping it really loose. And it's all, it's all based on, I just want to add just a little warmth to the sky area. So I'm just mixing up a really tiny bit of white and cadmium orange. And I'm taking a clean brush, brush that doesn't have any blue on it whatsoever. And I'm just going to lightly add it to the top. Again, just to kind of give it just a little bit of warmth and just to kind of break up that area somewhat. I'm going to add a tiny bit more white just to lighten that up a little bit more. And I have one of my older brushes so I'm just kind of scrubbing it in. And one of the reasons that I do like the canvas that has more of a texture is I like how the canvas itself, the fibers in the cotton, it picks up the paint in certain areas and doesn't pick it up in certain areas, especially when I use my palette light knife, you're really going to notice that. Um, so I like how if I'm just kind of lightly brushing it onto the canvas, the canvas itself is kind of picking up the paint some places and not in others. So it's not it's not a flat opaque area. It's, it's giving it some dimension, um, and some texture and where it's, um, lighter in some areas, darker in the other. And the canvas is helping create that effect. Um, so I'm just going to take a little step back, take a look at the painting, figure out where we're at, figure out what I want to do. Um, I think I want to add 
um, where I have some of this warmer color at the top here. It's almost like a gray day in a sense. I like to add, again, I like to add that sort of color, that warmth down on the bottom just a tiny little bit. So I still have some paint on my palette with this orange in it. I'm going to add a little bit of the clear gesso in there just to kind of loosen it up because I want it to have a nice fluid consistency. Again, I'm just going to really lightly brush it along the bottom part just so there's some cohesiveness between the colors across the entire canvas. So I got some warmth at the top. I'm adding a little bit of warmth at the bottom. All right. And then, you know, I still, I still feel like I want to break up this blue here, even though I really love this nice, rich ultramarine blue color. Um, I, I think I want to kind of emphasize that it's kind of getting lighter on, on to the right side of the canvas. So I'm going to, again, mix up some, I think I'll mix up some white, some ultramarine, and some cobalt, and start just kind of loosely laying it on here. So what I'm, what I'm doing is when, I, when I'm painting, I'm building up my layers because my, the very final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some paint right on the top of everything. And I want to kind of strategically think through what my final painting is and how am I going to build up the layers to get to that point where I'm just going to lay some paint right on top of everything else. So I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to work out this bottom area so that way that is done. So when I lay on that top paint, the area down here is already kind of thought through. The area up here is kind of thought through. You know, you can always change things as you go along, but I am trying to kind of work through building my layers to get to that final point. So, like I said, I'm going to I'm going to break up some of this area here with um some different values uh of the of the blue and I'm going to mix up some white um, some ultramarine blue and some cobalt blue just to see if we can kind of get a little bit of different variation of values in blue in there. So cleaning my palette like I always do. You know, if you notice, I, I only mix one color at a time. I know some people like to put various colors on their palette. I like to mix one color at a time, use it, clean my palette. It keeps my colors nice and fresh. So here's some white, here's some ultramarine blue, and here's some cobalt blue. I'll add some clear gesso in there. Again, just try to keep things a um, little loose. I'm noticing, especially today, that the paint is drying very fast. So I want to kind of keep it wet so I can kind of move it on. And I'm going to keep it really light the way I'm laying the painting down, uh, laying the paint down, just kind of brushing it on. And I'm kind of blending it in as I go. This gives it a little bit of a, a lighter value. And now I know I want to kind of um, blend in some of these edges. Some of the edges are getting a, a little uh, rough for me and I want it to kind of look like it's water and it's flowing and it blends blends nicely together. So I'm going to pull in some of the straight ultramarine blue. So I'm just going to take some ultramarine blue, put a little dab of it on my palette, wet it a little bit, and then I'm just going to go straight in with that color. Lay it on, and as you can see, I'm, I'm starting to just kind of soften the transition between that ultramarine blue and the blue mixture that I just created. All right. 
right? So I'm still thinking that this is a little bit on the gray side. And I do want a more of a really good pop of a, of a stronger blue color. So I'm going to focus on getting more of a um, white and ultramarine blue, but um, trying to get some of that gray out. So I'm, I'm feeling like it's a little on the gray side for me, and I want to kind of get a nice color, a nice blue color in there. So I definitely want to clean my palette. Put some ultramarine blue on here. Add a little bit of white, a little bit of the clear gesso. I'm going to mix this up with my palette knife. And I'm going to take this up and I'm going to bring it up to my canvas and I'm going to compare it and say, is this the blue that I want to add here? And I think I want to go just a little shade lighter. But I want it to be a nice fresh blue. So here we go. Here's a nice, nicer blue. So I'm just going to kind of lay it on there with my palette knife. And then I'm going to go in with my brush and again use my brush to just kind of soften it up. All right. And then I'm basically going to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to do it with the cobalt blue. So this is going to give you a, a good um, example of the difference between using cobalt blue and ultramarine blue with some white added to it and how they kind of, how they kind of work together but still have different properties to it. So again, I'm going to add some white and some cobalt blue. And I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of lay it on the canvas. And take my brush and just lightly blend it in a little bit. All right, so now we have a really nice base on the bottom of our painting where we got some nice variations between the different values of the blues. You know, we got a strong ultramarine blue, a little bit lighter, and then we got some cobalt blue on the end here. And, you know, if you wanted, you could go in, you could blend them more if you wanted, um, you could lighten things more. Um, I, I kind of like the way it's looking right now. So I'm going to kind of let that set and I'm going to, I'm going to take a look at this top area. Again, I'm feeling like I have a certain section that is, um, it's too, it's too one note basically. So I want to lighten this up a little bit, you know, and I have on my palette, I have a little bit of this mixture of the cobalt blue going on. I think I'm going to add a little bit of that to the top. Again, just to kind of break up this area that seems a little flat to me. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more white. Give it a little spritz to keep it wet. And then, yeah, absolutely. So there it is. I'm, I'm breaking this area up. Definitely looks a little softer.
And as you know, or hopefully you'll notice, when I paint, I always hold my tools very loose. When I started painting, I used to grab onto things. I would white knuckle my palette knife and my, and my, uh, my brush. So you want to kind of keep loose. I always stand when I paint because it keeps my energy flowing. Um, and I actually sometimes drop my tools when I'm holding things so, so loosely. So, you know, because it's to, painting to me is it's relaxing. It makes me feel good. So I don't want to be stressed out when I'm painting. So I like to, I like to be nice and loose. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of white and kind of throw it directly right on there, blend it in to lighten that up. All right. So that to me is, is looking really great. So we're going to move on to um, actually adding a whole different value. So from the painting that um, we want to complete, I'm going to add in, you know, a, a little strip of landmass right through the center. Um, we got the blues going, the bottom, that looks great. They're blending nicely. We got the top part. It's in a really good shape. Um, it's, you know, I've broken it up a little bit. We got some nice warmth in there. Um, so now I'm going to add a whole different value. So now we're going to work with our olive green and our cadmium orange. And when we mix that together, that's going to help me build like this more of a landmass or a sand or a nice beige that we're just going to lay in the center on the horizon line, again, keeping it really loose. So I'm going to clean my palette. I'm going to add some white. A little bit of the cadmium orange and then a little bit of the olive green and the olive green is what's going to give it some real earthy tones and when I mix this together I'm going to get this beautiful warm beigey sand color all right and I'm going to just kind of lay the paint on a little bit differently. So I'm going to scoop up some paint and I'm going to have like a nice bead of paint right on the edge of my palette knife. All right. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to kind of cut right across that horizon line. And I'm going to start, I'm not going to start at the very edge. I'm going to start somewhere inwards a little bit and I'm just going to really loosely drag it across and once again I'm going to let the canvas kind of the fibers in the canvas kind of pick up where the paint is going to fall I'm not going to force it to be anywhere if I wanted to connect the areas I could but I tend to like just kind of let the paint get onto the canvas and let it sit so now I'm going to go in here and I have a nice color. I have this nice beige color going across the horizon line. And I'm just going to go in here and really lightly take that color and just drag it down with my palette knife. Just going to drag it down real loosely on all these kind of three areas where the paint has been picked up. Drag it down. I got some paint on this other side. The blue is a little bit wet, which is fine just going to blend that in a little bit but again when you when you drag it down the canvas the fibers in the canvas the texture which is what I really like is picking up that paint in specific areas so it's not completely opaque it's not completely you know the same color it's getting picked up and it's leaving little specks here and there um, which is, which I really like because now the canvas is kind of dictating where this color is going. So I'm going to take a little bit more paint, same thing, drag it down. I wanted to, I want to drag it down on kind of different variations. Um, you know, like I dragged this one down a little bit longer than the other ones. I don't want it all to be, um, 
all in the same uh, same length, just to give it a variation. And then I'm going to take my brush, and in some areas, I'm just going to very lightly drag it across the paint, just to kind of blend it in a little bit. Keep it really light, keep it really loose. It looks really nice. This beige color, I always love the way that it sits on top of that ultramarine blue. It's such a beautiful combination. So I still have, um, I still have some mixture of this beige color on my palette. And I want to add, kind of like what I did with the blues, I want to add like a different value of the, the same beige color going on. So with the paint that's on my palette, I'm just going to add a little bit of, a little bit more of my olive green. And this is going to darken it up. You know, and if you're thinking, if you think about sand out on the beach, you have some areas that are wet, so they're darker, some areas that are dry, so they're a little bit lighter. So again, I just want to kind of add a little bit of variation in this earthy color. I'm sticking with still a combination with the olive green and the cadmium orange, but I'm just making it a little bit darker. So same thing, I'm just adding some to my palette knife, and I'm just going to kind of pick an area to kind of lay that across. Just being really light, letting it fall where it wants. You know, and I'm not bringing, like this time, I'm not bringing this color all the way up to the horizon line because I like the way you have like the three colors going on right now. You get the, the lighter area of the sky, you still have some of that richer ultramarine blue peeking through, and now you have this, this more earthy, darker, um, sand color that's laying on top of everything, okay? And I think I'll take some of this and just lightly add it to the edge. You know, if we think about kind of like a sandbar at the beach, you see the sand kind of peeking through different areas. So at this point, I have been happy with how this painting has been turning out. Um, I have, you know, my two main areas, more of a grayish blue, more of um, ultramarine, cooler blues going on the bottom. I have my earth colors, my neutral colors in the center. The last step that I tend to do on a painting is I start to add some colors right out of the tubes, okay? So I like to, I like to add, um, in this case, add some olive green along this horizon line because olive green is your really, really rich, dark color. So that's where you're gonna get that nice contrast. And you can do it two ways. You can either take the tube itself and kind of draw it right on. Again, let the paint fall where it, ever, where it wants to. Or you can put some down on your palette and you can, you can add it with your palette knife. Adding it with the palette knife gives you a little bit more control, um, but if you wanna be a little reckless and you wanna be a little risky, then you can do it right out of the tube. This, this type of paint had the tube opening is a little bit larger, so you might have a lot of paint that comes out. Uh, if it does, it does, it's no big deal. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna be a little risky and I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add it right along the horizon line. Get some nice dark color in there. So as you can see, it's the darkest color on the canvas. It's sitting right on top of everything and it's drawing your attention in. It's drawing that viewer's attention in. Um, and it's, you know, it's got a great contrast between the dark olive green and then the lighter beige. So again, it's a spot where Here's the nice contrast and draw that viewer's eye right in. So then on top of that, my very, very last thing that I tend to love to do is add like a, just a little spot of cadmium orange. This color is 
my sunshine. I think of it as a drop of sun. Um, it an, is another way to kind of draw that viewer's eye in. Here's that pop of color. You know, you hear interior designers always talk about, oh, I work with neutral colors and I throw pillows in there for a pop of color. That's, this is my pop of color, this Academy in Orange. And again, I'm going to take it right from the tube and I'm just going to find some little spot that I want. I'm going to put on a little, little blob of paint, squeeze it out, and then I'm just going to flick it down. And again, I'm just going to let it come down, let the canvas pick it up and let it fall where it wants to. I'm not going to control it. I'm not going to force it. I just want to get that color on there for that pop of color that may, that really kind of makes this whole painting one final piece. And it, and it makes the painting, to me, it makes the painting um, complete because you have some grays, you have some neutral colors, you have your cool blue colors, you have some contrast there, and then you have a really, really nice spot of a warm color. And all of those pieces together, to me, are what make the painting a balanced and complete painting. So I think I'll add a little bit more here. You know, sometimes I like to go in, add the orange a couple of different places. Um, but overall, we're done. This is, this is my painting. This is the painting. Um, and I, like I said, I wanted to keep it really, really simple. Um, and you know, we did a lot, even though we work quickly, it's a small painting. We got a lot accomplished here with adding different values, um, and adding some contrast and adding some complementary colors between the orange and the blue. So one last final thing that I want to mention is um, the techniques that I used in this painting are the same exact techniques that I used in my painting Settled Whispers. Um, you know, Settled Whispers is a 30 by 30 painting. So obviously I took probably a little bit more time in how I was developing the different values, but the techniques that I used and what I showed you today are the same techniques, very similar to the same exact paint colors that I used, that I used in Settled Whispers. So you can apply this technique, you can apply this, what you learned today on bigger paintings, smaller, tiny paintings, um, and you know, take it and run with it and have lots of fun. Thanks so much.